Welcome to The Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello. It's great to be with you. Today we are talking about recalibrating. Now, I admittedly am not good with directions. If I'm using a GPS and it says, head north on such and such road, I usually have no idea what north is. I need you to tell me, turn right. So inevitably, if I attempt to go north, I end up totally going in the wrong direction. And then I don't know if this has ever happened to you, where then the GPS starts to freak out and it's like recalculating. And then you're waiting for it to catch up to the recalculation. Meanwhile, you're being instructed to make U-turns, people behind you, you're going super slow because you can't see the street, you're frustrating traffic. If there's passengers in the car, they're frustrated, what's going on, what are we doing? And so just the frustration tends to build. So I have found that in those situations where I inevitably am supposed to go north and don't do that, when I pull off to the side of the road, I let my GPS have a chance to recalibrate. I get a sense of where I'm going. Oh, okay, I'm here. I need to be there. And what are the best options? And then I can proceed forward without all the wrong turns and frustrations. And so as I was thinking about this analogy, I thought, you know what? In the same way, I think it helps when we are facing decisions in life where we need to recalibrate and maybe we veer off a little bit or we're not exactly sure where we're going to pause, take that time to reorient ourselves versus trying to do it in the process, in motion, that then I think leads to the frustration and the U-turns and all of the different things that I just described. So on that note today, as we explore the topic of recalibration, perhaps you find yourself recal recalibrating one specific area of life, or maybe there's a season that you're trying to recalibrate, or sometimes, especially with groups of people, there might be a large overhaul that you might be trying to recalibrate. And so I want to just open up the conversation today when we talk about this idea of recalibration, what comes up for the two of you. It's a fun analogy, I think, the notion of the GPS and the person trying to find their way. And just to say, I can't do north. I mean, maybe if the sun's out and I was stopped in a parking lot, I could be like, okay, the sun is going this away. Here's east, here's west, and then go from there. But I am always confused when they're like the north side of the building. I don't have that memorized, which side is the north. But yeah, there are certain kind of metaphors that work with what is the GPS in your day-to-day -day life. And so I think of a time when Dominic, my husband, and I went to see a counselor, right? And it was so much fun. We actually thought of it as like date time. Like we just really enjoyed talking about the relationship. So not like the crisis scenario, but it was funny how we would go in with these things that we thought were problems or we were in this fight or whatever. And the counselor would point out, you, you see how you were both trying to be helpful to one another, right? And I'm like, you're like loving each other and missing each other in the midst of it, which was so interesting to notice. Like each of us had goodwill towards the other one and just two ships passing, if you will. And so there are these kind of helps that I think exist, counselors being one of them, but certainly spiritual directors personal trainers. I'm sure there are many ways in which we have this little guide or this little helper to put something back in alignment. I like this analogy. I really appreciate you bringing this to the podcast, Christina. And I appreciate your story of using counseling as a time to enjoy one another's presence, Christina Kaiser. I, I think something that comes to me, two words that you said is group discernment and seasons of life. And I find myself swimming in circles where I'm part of a Benedictine community and I get to hang out with some folks that are quite a bit older than myself. And age comes with different diminishment of abilities, things that they can do. And so I love sitting and listening to them say, I can't do this anymore. My body is failing me. And so I have to discern what I can do. Some of them have said that the statio, the pause, the holy pause has been so important whenever somebody asks them, hey, can you do this? You want to do this with me? And they take that, that deep breath and they say, I don't think my 
I don't think my capacity is at a place to engage in that type of activity, but I would love to participate in this way. And so I just love the recalibration that I see my Benedictine friends making. And it's not really on the fly. There, there was that holy pause, that deep breath that allowed for the, this is where I'm at right now. This is where I probably can go. And so I, I've really appreciated that when it comes to this idea of recalibrating. I like what both of us are mentioning th between the two of you. And again, I'm hearing like a pace. There's a slowing down or sometimes a full on stop that one needs when recalibrating. And again, whether it's smaller things or larger things in our lives that we're reevaluating and looking at. And I was recently in a gathering and this person was processing what does it look like to engage more with neighbors and particularly as a person of faith with the community of faith and a lot of the barriers and the judgments and the back and forth that have often been in those contexts. And somebody else in the group said, I think your idea of just building relationship, that's really important and it takes time and it's worthy of your time to do that. And so again, as he was trying to recalibrate and get a sense of what's next and how do I engage, recognizing that taking even months to simply build relationships, simply get to know people in your area without agenda matters and is important and is laying groundwork for the potential of future partnership and collaboration, where I think oftentimes we want to do that quicker recalibration and be very action oriented. And so I appreciate what's being named today of the recalibration pace and pause. I think both of the things that I'm hearing. Yeah, that notion of pulling off the road or taking the pause definitely is a game changer in in life, I think. Like even just yesterday we I was doing this poet poetic divina type thing. The poem was clearing and I can get the author's name and put it in the show notes. I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's funny to notice in this divina you start with what's standing out. Why is that standing out? Maybe you know what action or what intention is coming to mind. And we ended with some gratitude. And I found myself at the beginning leaning into old mindset patterns. Oh, I, I better make sure to work on this. And by the end, in the gratitude moment, I could see like a totally different moment in the poem. She talks about the song that is your life. And it's this mind shift from I'm always this way. This is the way that I act. These are the things that I have to work on. I don't know. The self-discipline almost to blah. What? <laughs> this is a lovely life. This is a wonderful life. It was a totally different mind shift. But that is the beauty of pause sometimes is you shift the story. You shift the perspective. You get your bearings a little bit. You're not who you were, right? You've had transformation. Yeah. And I... I'm thinking of, I, I love that you brought up poetry and how poetry has helped you. And I recently discovered a poem, and I think this idea of recalibrating uh, applies to it. But I think a lot of times when we are discerning, okay, what was the season for? A, a lot of times we say, oh gosh, that was a waste. Like all that time, it didn't end up panning out. Or some people think they're in a career and they're not happy in that career or they're having to recalibrate. And this part of this poem is from David White, the Coleman's bed, but it says, be taught now among the trees and the rocks, how the discarded is woven into shelter. Learn the way things hidden and unspoken slowly proclaim their voice in the world. And then it says to make yourself a door through which to be hospitable, even to the stranger in you. And so I love this notion of the things that we think where it relates to time or what we've done to our life to take those things and actually it says it, it becomes woven shelter, things that, that actually speak to your life and speak to the future. And I, I think that's so important. I don't think viewing how you spent your previous years and saying, oh, that was so wasteful, or I didn't accomplish what I want to accomplish. But how has your life brought you to the place that you're at now? And what are the important things in what you've learned in the past going to propel you into the future? As I'm hearing you both use poetry as an example of this, and just the idea of the importance of fresh language when we're recalibrating or different language, different perspectives. 
again, going back to my driving analogy, North means nothing to me. I, I can't connect with the word North. And I think sometimes there's language that we have that we just don't connect with anymore. And it doesn't help us get into the direction that we need to. But when we are maybe having some fresh language or a different perspective from another voice, a person into our lives, it's, oh, okay, that makes sense. And I can proceed this way in that particular decision and really appreciate this idea of the fresh language or language that is nuanced, maybe in a way that draws something else out in us. Yeah. And there's this attention to what do I do when I realize, oh, gosh, I don't think I'm where I'm supposed to be or everything's telling me I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I think about this in various contexts, like in our family context, I've noticed sometimes there's just a funk, right? Like everyone's bickering or they're whiny or irritable with one another. And I learned by accident, like we'd have somewhere to go and we'd all leave the house and everybody's mood changed and we got back and it was just different. So sometimes it's like a total change of scenery is very helpful. Just stop the chaos or (laughs) do something else. Get your mind off of it. Allow the emotional stuff to reset. And then you can come back and you have fresh perspective, fresh ability to be with one another or deal with the situation. Also, I think in work, sometimes there's this like spinning of the wheels a little bit. And then someone will have an idea, like a little brainstorm. And it may not be where you start, right? But like you start and then there's a trail that goes somewhere. But sometimes we are, we're just stuck and we need a way out of the loop, if you will. I heard you name family and you named work relationships. And I think most most prominent in my mind right now is both of those things. But I think one thing that comes to my mind is we are a family of five and there are so many different personalities, right? And we've been butting up against this, this tension. And we have several people in the family that love to plot and plan the day, right? Like they want to know, they want to know where we're going. They want to know the stops along the way. I don't know if you've ever ridden a bus line or the, there are people that love to look at the stop. I have this many stops and they love to count how many stops. And there's this looking forward to what's next. And there are a few people and I'm one of them in my family. Maybe there, there might just be one, but there might be another one that just want to be present to, they don't want, I don't want to look at the amount of stops that, that we have. I want to look around at the people on the bus. I, or I want to look around at the people on the train and I want to be present to the moment. I want to have conversations. I want to go with the flow. And I am totally okay with a plan, but I've had to learn to value the plotting because that is what some people need. It doesn't like sometimes it's this friction in me. Like, why do we have to know where we're going all the time? Why can't we just enjoy the beauty of the way? And so I think there's a balance of both. There's a balance to knowing where you're going, because if you don't actually start out, you'll never go anywhere, but also to be okay with detours or be okay with something that comes up. And I think that's something that comes to my mind of working with different personalities, different types, and seeing the beauty in the people that you work with or the people in your family. And if you notice there is tension or there is fighting, how do you come to a win-win within your group and allow for each person's personality to emerge, to show you the beauty of life. Christina, I love what you're saying about sometimes just going out, leaving the house and then coming back and something has shifted. And I think particularly during COVID, that was something that felt really meaningful of just changing the scenery. And even now, sometimes when I am having certain reflection times, I'll go to a different area of the house that's just a little bit of a different space. And I've noticed I'm reflecting a little bit differently sitting by this particular window versus a particular other place in the house or whatever. And so sometimes those little shifts in our personal reflection time or certainly at work, I'm going to just go get five minutes of fresh air and then come back in and approach the problem differently. So I really appreciate the sort of breaking, the stopping, the pause in order to recalibrate. Yeah, I think so too. I've noticed, same as you're saying, Christina, when sometimes I can't figure out where I want to go in something related to my writing or whatever. And so I might get up and chop vegetables or go get the kids from school. It's while I'm in motion, some new idea pops in. 
that's so weird. Why is it like that? But it is. Because I might have been sitting there for a while trying to decide where to go and nothing. And then as soon as I move, boom. Chris, when you were talking, <laughs> something popped into my head. It was like, I like to talk to people. Da, 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 da. I like to miss my stop. Like, literally, that's what's <laughs> clearly I have some anxiety, which, you know, which I think is an important aspect of all of this. Like, all these different personalities, when we feel lost what do we need personally because that does i think conjure up emotion and i've got others in my family who are now able to name the emotions that they're feeling we've actually worked on emotions a lot in our household but now they use it against me they'll be like mom that's your anxiety coming out and i'll be like not <laughs> but but i know this about myself at this point and so even recently i had mentioned on the podcast a few times i was in this play that was a scenario where it's okay you technically can't get off the road right there's not going to be a stop on this journey there's not going to be a space that everything's going to say no stopping no parking and so there were certain things that I could do okay I can make a meal plan I can have the groceries bought on Friday instead of our usual day so that this can go through but there is a lot sometimes of just if I can't really stop then what can I rely on? What techniques have I learned already? So sometimes it is the breathing or the candle or something that allows me to stay in this moment, stay grounded, stay connected to what is, because emotional turmoil is real. It's a thing. I acknowledge that it's a thing. And I feel for those that have that. And I think just to your comment about the anxiety about missing the stop, I think one of the things that is real for me is if you're in a beautiful conversation with someone and you miss your stop, you had a beautiful conversation with someone and you would have missed beauty by keeping to that schedule. But that's the thing. We don't allow spaciousness in our lives for beauty sometimes, right? And so sometimes you have to be driven by a schedule, but sometimes you can say, you know what? I, I'll get off at the next stop. And I'll have this beautiful conversation that is right here, right now. Says the person who knows where North is. And if you get up at the wrong stop, you can easily find your way home. <laughs> Thank you so much for this conversation on recalibration. It's been a joy to be together. And now is the part of the podcast where we talk about what we are into. So what are we into this week? I hadn't thought about it much until this moment, but continuing on our Pizzelle journey, we have now done like regular Pizzelles, almond Pizzelles, recently chocolate Pizzelles. And I had very little hope for chocolate Pizzelles, but I love them. I had also adjusted the flour recipe, which could play into it as well. But it turns out I find chocolate Pizzelles to be quite the delight and would like to go for round two on that for sure. Here in America, we recently just had what is known as the Super Bowl. And one of the things that a lot of people who are not interested in football whatsoever love about the Super Bowl are the commercials. And we just had the Super Bowl and there were a lot of funny commercials. And so I've been dialoguing with people about Super Bowl commercials that we just experienced a few days ago. I am into what we are calling quarter birthdays. And so my eight-year-old loves numbers and decided in his planner to circle. And evidently today is his quarter birthday. And he made sure we all knew about it. To which one of his sisters like, that's stupid. Nobody celebrates quarter birthdays. And he was crushed. And so I'm like, you know what? Why not? We can start celebrating quarter birthdays. And we talked about what can we do as a family when it's... So we wrote down everybody's quarter birthday. So we now know when that is. And we decided that everybody gets the number of quarters. So like he's eight. So he got eight quarters today for his quarter birthday. My 16 year old will get 16 quarters, et cetera. So that's our tradition. So now we have to come up with a, I'm sure this is coming a half birthday and a three quarters birthday tradition. But you know what? I'm like, I'm a sucker for any excuse to celebrate. So we are now a family that celebrates quarter birthdays. So that is what I am into. Thanks so much for being with us. And until next time, make it a great week. 
If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to stay connected by signing up for our Foundry Spiritual Center newsletter, where you can learn about even more programs and offerings. You'll find a link to subscribe in the show notes or visit us anytime at foundrysc.com. Thanks again for being with us. We hope you have a great week.